Hello! In the previous video we looked at conditional derivation in English, and now we're going to see what a conditional derivation looks like in the formal system. So, just to remind you of what the steps of a conditional derivation are, the first thing is not a step, but it's the fact that we're trying to show a conditional. The conclusion of the argument that we're trying to do a derivation of is a conditional. We're trying to show if it snowed in Denver, then I will be late, or whatever. We're not trying to show uh, an atomic sentence, like, I will be late, and we're not trying to show a negation, like, I won't be late. We're trying to show a conditional. That's the goal of a conditional derivation. So the first step is to assume the antecedent of the conditional that we're trying to show. And then, this, then the second part, and this is itself has multiple steps, but we reason to the consequent of the conditional. There's a conditional we're trying to show. We assume the antecedent, we're going to reason to the consequent, and in doing so, we're going to use our inference rules, and we're going to rely on whatever premises the argument has, and we're going to rely on this assumption that we just made. And if we can do that, if we can reason from the antecedent to the consequent, then we know that if the premises are true, then so is the conclusion. In particular, so is this conditional. If the premises are true, and we can reason from the antecedent to the consequent, that means if the premises are true, then the conditional is true. And therefore, we infer the conditional. So, okay, well, what does this look like in a formal system? Well, here's an argument that's a symbol. Is, this is if p, then q. If q, then r. Therefore, if p, then r. And this has the same form as that argument that we looked at in the um, in English. And this argument has the same problem that if you look at just the premises, you don't have what you need to do modus ponens. To do modus ponens with the first premise, you need p, you don't have p. To do modus ponens with the second premise, you need q, you don't have q. To do modus tollens with the first premise, you need not q, you don't have not q. To do modus tollens with the second premise, you need not r, you don't have not r. So you can't do modus ponens or modus tollens with just the premises of this argument, and simplification, double negation, and junction aren't going to help. So the first thing we do is we say show if p then r, and then we're going to do a new thing. Instead of putting in our premises, we're going to make an assumption. We're going to say p, that's the antecedent of the condition we're trying to show, and the justification for that is ASSCD, which stands for Assume for Conditional Derivation. Having made this assumption like we did in English, then we'll bring in our premises. So we'll say if p then q, that's our first premise, and if q then r, that's our second premise brought in all our premises. Now we want to look and see, are there any rule applications? Can we do modus ponens? Well, we look at line 3. Line 3 is a conditional, so we might be able to do modus ponens with it if we have its antecedent. Its antecedent is p, and in fact we have p on line 2, so we will say modus ponens with 2 and 3, and that gives us q. So we're done with 3. We're not going to use it again. But we do have another conditional in our old sentences if q then r. And so if we have the antecedent of that, we can do modus ponens. And our new line, q, is, is the antecedent of line 4. So we're going to combine our old line, if q then r, with our new line, q, using modus ponens, and we will get r. Now, so now look at what we've done. Uh, we assumed p, which was the antecedent of the conditional we're trying to show, and we now reason to r, which is the consequent of the conditional we're trying to show. So we've argued from the antecedent of the conclusion to the consequent of the conclusion. Well, now that we have the consequent of the conclusion, we can finish our derivation. No, we don't have a p then r, but we're going to box and cancel anyway. We're going to say 6cd. We're saying on line 6 that we have the consequent of the conditional we're trying to show. And that will let us box and cancel the conclusion. So this is new, right? With direct derivation, you need to get the conclusion of the argument on a line. But here, all you need is the consequent of the argument on a line. So that's what we got. We argued from the antecedent to the consequent. So there are two new parts to this derivation. There's line 2, which is the assumption, and there's line 6, which is the new method of boxing and canceling. We made an assumption for conditional derivation, and then we boxed and canceled with conditional derivation. So, in general, a conditional derivation will look like this. You'll be trying to show a conditional. On the next line, you'll make an assumption for conditional derivation, which will be the antecedent of whatever you're trying to show. Then, you'll proceed as follows. You'll put in the prem or as usual. You'll put in the premises, and you'll apply inference rules, and that will eventually get you to the consequent of what you're trying to show. And at that point, you will then say, aha, 
I have the consequent, so I will say CD, and then I can box and cancel and finish the derivation. So we have two new moves in our formal system. The first is we have assume CD. This is a new way to add a line. The second is that we have CD, and this is a new way to box and cancel. And you need to memorize how both of them work and be able to use them in the derivations. So let's first say how they work. So when you're trying to show a conditional, and only when you're trying to show a conditional, you can make an assumption for a conditional derivation, and we abbreviate that as assume CD. This lets you write down the antecedent on a new line. So you're trying to show if z then x, this lets you write down z the antecedent. Or in our case, if you were trying to show if p then r, you can write down p. The assumption must always be on the next line after the show line. It can't be later in the derivation. Premises you can write down wherever you want. Assumptions have to be written down right away after a show line. Why that is, we're not going to talk about their reasons why, but it's, we're not going to get into them. What you need to know is, I can make assumptions. Right now I only have one assumption, assume CD. I can only use it when I'm trying to show a conditional, and I have to use it on the line right after the show line. So that's assume CD. CD, if you're trying to show a conditional, and you get the consequent, then you can box and cancel with CD. So instead of getting the conclusion on a line, line say line 9, and then saying on the next line 9DD, you get the consequent of the conclusion on a line, and you say, um, uh, you know, say you get the, you're trying to show if P then R, you get R on a line, on line 9, next line you say 9CD, and that will let you box and cancel the show line. And those are what we did in that, uh, if you go back and look at that previous slide, you'll see that that's what we've done. So, how do we uh, sort of incorporate these new rules into our strategies? Well, whenever you're trying to show a conditional, whenever the conclusion is a conditional, try to do a conditional derivation. So, in particular, uh, on the line after the show line, assume the antecedent with CD. Whenever you're trying to show a conditional, if you know, P then Q, if Q then R, if Q then Z, if U then V, whatever, on the next line, assume CD to have the antecedent. And then your goal is not to get the conclusion anymore, it's to get the consequent of the conclusion. Your goal is to show that the conclusion is true. We do that in the derivation system by boxing and canceling the, conclu the conclusion line. We now have two ways to box and cancel. DD works just fine, but now you have a new way. You can box and cancel if what you're trying to show is a conditional and you get its consequent. And that's when you're trying to do a conditional derivation, that's what you want to do. And when you're trying to show a conditional, you want to try to do a conditional derivation. So when you're trying to show a conditional, try to get the consequent of the conclusion. Don't try to get the whole conditional. So you assume the antecedent, and you try to get the consequent. And when you do, then you can use CD to box and cancel. So our derivation system now has four or five moves. First, you always show the conclusion at the beginning. Then, you do assume CD if you're trying to show a conditional. If you're not, you don't do assume CD. If you are not trying to show a conditional and you try to uh, do assume CD, the derivation system will tell you, no, you can't make an assumption here because you're not trying to show a conditional. Then we, so that's, line two is new. That's a new kind of thing. But then we go back to proceeding as we have as usual. So you enter the premises. And then you apply your inference rules, modus ponens, modus tollens, simplification, adjunction, and double negation. And finally, you box and cancel. But now we have two ways to box and cancel. If you get the conclusion, as we have done before, you can use DD. If you get the consequent of the conditional you're trying to show, if you're trying to show a conditional, then you can use CD instead. So either are good. You always want to box and cancel as soon as you can. Don't worry about, is this the best way? If you can box and cancel, then do so and complete the derivation. So I will demonstrate uh, some examples, more examples with using Assume CD and CD in uh, another video. If you have questions, please let me know. Good luck driving.